From 1835 to 1857, the family of Robert and Anna Burwell made their home in Hillsboro at what is now the Burwell School Historic Site. Their family was large, with 12 children spaced over 20 years apart. What was Christmas like for the Burwell family? What were their traditions? Christmas in the mid-19th century was just beginning to be associated with the traditions we are familiar with today, such as Christmas trees, greeting cards, and Santa Claus. Santa Claus, as we know him today, first appeared in the familiar tale, Twas the Night Before Christmas, originally published as An Account of a Visit from St. Nicholas in 1822. The figure of Santa can be traced back to the St. Nicholas of Myra, who was born at the end of the 3rd century and is associated with giving gifts and protecting children. Anna Burwell mentioned Santa Claus in several 1855 letters to her daughter Fanny. Unfortunately for the Burwell children, money was tight during their years in Hillsboro, and it seems that often meant that the children did not receive gifts from Santa. The children have nothing in their stockings at all, Anna wrote. They laughed and said they would not hang them up for ground peas and apples. Old Santa Claus had brought that long enough. Hillsboro shopkeepers sought to capitalize on the increased spending around the holidays and tailored their advertising to Christmas shoppers. Down street from the Burwell School, Schoolfields & Co. offered their stock of fancy article and books at a low cost. As early as 1847, Mrs. Vasseur, who operated a confectionery, advertised that Santa Claus, on his last annual visit, expressed his entire approbation of her good things and carried off a large quantity for his favorites among the children. Beyond the gifts, the holiday was always marked as a time to be together as a family. At Christmas, the school was closed, and many of the boarders returned home. By 1855, several of the Burwell sons were away from home, working or at school, and Anna was excited to welcome them back for a time. I never was as ready for Christmas. The house is all cleaned, the clothes are all fixed, and the press and little room, filled with cakes, jelly, and puddings, I spent all yesterday cooking. Common Christmas traditions took shape throughout the 1800s. In 1843, Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol, about the same time that developments in manufacturing made mass-produced goods more readily available. For the Burwell family, it appears their approach to Christmas became much more elaborate over time. By 1866, the family had been living in Charlotte and operating the Charlotte Female Institute for almost 10 years. Youngest daughter Jenny Burwell was only 15 years old when she wrote enthusiastically about the family Christmas celebrations. Monday night we had the Christmas tree and charades and tableau, Jenny wrote to her brother Eddie, telling him the festivities went so long the family didn't go to bed until 1 a.m. Fonzo Young was Santa Claus, he was dressed all in furs. Gift giving in the family also evolved. In 1855, Anna wrote to Fanny, the children, at least Jenny, are constantly talking of Christmas. The holiday elicited excitement in the household, but according to Anna, she had no money to buy candy and toys with, and stated, our children don't expect it, they make themselves happy with what they can get. However, by 1866, the situation had changed. Jenny gushed to her brother Eddie, I got 17 presents, don't you think I got a good many? Most of the gifts were practical, like shoes, gloves, and a scarf, but the excitement of receiving something new was still there. For a family as large as theirs, with children marrying and going away to school, and with the constant work of the school, it appears that the holiday season was a time when Anna especially could focus on just being a mother, cooking special things for her family without the additional responsibilities of the students and their education. The enslaved members of the Burwell household did not have this same luxury. They were expected to work and be available throughout the season, but December 26th was marked as their holiday. Unfortunately, no records exist to describe how they spent their rare day off. As America began to develop its Christmas customs, the Burwell household also was changing its practice. Much like modern families, they were limited by finances, but it appears the focus of the season during times of bounty and times of famine remained constant. Family is what Christmas is all about.